Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, a different type of video on this channel, something that I've been playing with the idea with for a little while now, which is to do immediate race recap type deals. Basically, we're just going to analyze some things that I noticed during the race and so on and so forth. Uh, these, <clears throat> these are kind of, I wanted to kind of do when I'm not making the bigger videos. These are a lot easier and quicker to make, and I want to I try and get these out as soon as possible post the cup races. So uh, the duels were tonight, or probably last night with when this video comes out. It'll probably be early Friday morning this video will come out. Um, and I, I got a few things. You know, it's just really the first time we've seen the cars at speed on track racing. Uh, a lot of people made a lot of assumptions based on what happened in qualifying. The Toyos were incredibly slow. So the first thing that I noticed on the broadcast, which was actually very interesting, was this, what was this called? Block off plate. I think is the, the, the actual, the block off plate. I don't know why I'm guess, second guessing the name. It's right on the screen. So Larry McGrath was explaining this. You know, this is a, a plate they put over uh, the, the inflow of the car that, that changes the, uh, the velocity and the output of the air across the cowl and out of the car in general. I'm curious as to how much the teams actually get free reign with this, with this plate. Uh, is it they could just do whatever they want, you know, make multiple holes, make different shaped holes, you know, they could do plus sign holes, you know, square holes, circular holes, rectangular, octagonal. Could they angle the, because I, I wonder how thick this plate is. I wonder how, um, how maybe they could angle the, uh, the, the, the actual hole that the plate or that the holes are, you know, if they, how would I describe it? Like if it's tapered in as, as you enter the hole or so on and so forth. So this little moment here with Stenhouse and LaJoy, this is a classic situation of uh, you're having trying to have two guys block um, lanes at the same time. Always the first place guy is going to block the lane pretty well. The problem is, is that this happens with the second place guy. So you have to, you're kind of doing a double reaction. Because already the first place guy is reacting to the cars that are coming up behind him. So the second place guy has to react to not only... The car is coming up behind them, but he has to react to the car in front of him as well. So he's got to kind of have eye, eyeballs in the front and back of his head. It's It can be done, but it is really difficult. And it usually, if you try this too much, it always leads to you getting in the suck. Next thing here is um, the pit stops. And we all know the, the incredible save that happened here. But I want to talk a little bit more about the actual Toyota plan here. So if you look... Right here, and hopefully I'll show I'll show my, my mouse here. Truex moves low, and this is strategic, you know, because they're gonna they know they're coming down this time. So what the whole plan is, is that Jimmy is going to use Larson to draft ahead, right? Basically, they're basically Larson they're they're using him because he's unaware of the situation, and they have him prone. So they're they're in control here. What they're gonna do is they're gonna push Larson ahead with Jimmy, and then as soon as Jimmy clears Truex, he's going to hop in. Now, hopefully in that time, it'll allow Ty Gibbs to get in behind Truex. And then what Reddick is going to do in this is he's kind of, he's kind of in limbo because I, I think what they were the ideal plan here was was that they were going to use Larson to try and get both Ty and Jimmy in front of Truex, and as they did that, that's when Reddick slips in. But the but what happened was, and we'll we'll go ahead here. See, they they use this momentum. They're coming along. They get ahead. You see, Reddick Reddick or not Reddick, Gibbs trying trying trying. He's going to get there as well. What happens here is everything closes up. So now Truex has to audible. He's got to he's got to back off even more to try and slip Reddick in the line in front of him, because they were hoping that he could get in behind Truex, but it didn't happen. So try and try and try and right here it's it's tight. Try and try and right there he's got to he's got to come down. You know, and it's really hard here though to come down that hard. For, turn four, I don't know why, it, through, historically, is incredibly hard to make any maneuver. And any driver probably, could probably tell you, if you tried to turn that hard down the banking off a of turn four at Daytona, you're going around. And he can't do it. You know, he knows what's going to happen. And 
as soon as he does that, everyone hits the breaking point for pit lane. So now, naturally, just because of the slowing down in speed, everybody condenses again. So now the hole is really closed up. Reddick goes for it. Whoopsie. He goes for it and can't get in there. He gets kind of stuck in this limbo on the rear end, on the right side of of Ty, of Ty Gibbs. I'm just going to call him Tyler Gibbs. So Ty and Tyler, they make this little bit of contact. This is mainly due to the fact that Truex clipped him. And I don't know what Truex really is doing here. I don't know why he stayed out. I think he may may have felt like the situation had gone wrong, like they didn't get the everybody in line because he because he because he saw that Reddick didn't get in. They they maybe thought, okay, we're gonna go another lap, but he stayed out, and everyone else is you know, hey, we're going in. Um, and you see, there's Jones back there as well, and you see right back here, this is where this this little incident happens. LaJoy just, if we go back about ten seconds, I'll we'll, I'll show the LaJoy part. So here's Joe. LaJoy's got to run. He's sucking right up. He slows down, you know. Still slow. You know, he actually backs off a little bit, but now all these guys are pitting. Austin Dillon checks up a little bit, and then he checks up even more because he sees this happening. And again, just uh, what a great save by Dillon as well. I know he does make contact, put Todd Gillen on the wall, but I mean, that the fact that he didn't uh, eat it, really good. Really good job. I know they showed the angle of when Chase checked this up originally, but I I think this falls on Logano more than anybody else. I do not know what he was doing here, and we'll see. On this replay, actually, I'll mute the audio so we don't have to hear them talking over it. So as you see right here, he goes under, and I don't. Now you may go, well, he only he only thinks he's three wide. Yes, but. This is a really tight spot to be put in a car, especially when you're supposedly protecting the car. I don't know why you're going that tight. And I also got to imagine your crew chief or spotter's got to be going, hey, um, you're basically four wide. You're basically four wide. You know, you're basically... And, and this also falls a little bit on LaJoy. I really don't know why LaJoy's putting it there either. I mean, like, hey... I guess it's you know you're at the bravery to go four wide, but I really don't know why you're going four wide. And yeah, and then, and then he realizes his mistake of going four wide. Logano doesn't lift, and I mean Lejoy lifts so much. I because listen, I get that you're four wide, but you also can't if you commit to it, you know, and it's really dangerous. You can't just back out of it like you do right here. He backs out of it, you know. Give Daniel Hemmer credit, didn't hit him. Went, hey, and actually had the apprehension to not run him over. I give him credit for that. But what happens here is, you know, Hemrick saw it, but no one else behind Hemrick saw it. And what happens when you see the incident that could happen and, you, and you're the one who slows down for it? You're the one that gets run over. And bam, in the wall, car spent. Uh, and all three of these guys just spin, whatever, not, nothing super bad. Uh, they talked about the, the fender damage. I think the biggest damage was right there, that sparking. They have an onboard of it. Let me see if I can find it. in the. Yeah, let's see if we can listen. Because this is just sounds awful. I don't know why they didn't they go like, hey, this is bad. His head bouncing around. These cars are very violent when you wreck. Let me back up a little bit. There it is. Here, listen to it. Right here. Oh, so much underbody work. All right, so the finish here. Um, very unique thing that we have not seen in the duel in a while was two car, two battles, one for the win, one for the transfer. Really like they went split screen here, and really like that this ended the way it did. Um, we'll go through here. I'll talk through the last lap. We'll try and break it down. So right here we got Suarez and Larson side by side, and Jimmy and JJ Yaley side by side for the transfer. So it, it's. It's a double side-by-side -side situation. Now, what Jimmy does right here, coming into one on the last lap, is going to be something that I find quite unique. The Hendrick boys tandem right here as well. So that 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 they're they're moving there. Very interesting thing by the Hendrick by Hendrick cars, by the way, uh, that is not talked about enough. They they found a way to comprehend the not flat noses with something arrow. 
You see it here. Now, now they do make pushes still. But they're the best car when it comes to the aero bubble push. And, and I mean, you see that Elliot has pushed Larson by far ahead of what Suarez is doing right here. And he's not even on him. He just has this little, like, crevice of air that he's riding on right now. Anyway. See, I see, see he's, he's you know, three feet between them. Anyway, right here. Jimmy moves up. And right here, I, I thought at this point, okay. I don't know what the game plan is. You know, but I think Jimmy recognizes, hey, they're checking a bad down here. You know, you got some bad handling cars. You know, they're running the short, the shorter radius. They're on the most, they're on worn tires. Not ideal situation for me to be. And this is pretty brave to be behind the guy. You know, a lot of guys wouldn't do this. I think some experience here. So he's behind Yaley. Um, riding behind him here at the moment. Right here at the front. Chase had Chase did the textbook move to win a race on a on a, on a uh, play track, push the guy out so you two are the two single file, then slingshot him because you got him prone. The only problem is he did it too soon, as you'll see right here. Watch Reddick. Reddick is able to push the five car out there, and he's the one that does the textbook move to win this race. Right here, you can't do anything. You're gonna wreck yourself doing anything right there. A little side draft there grabs the air. Gets him. Larson trying all he can. Larson trying all he can to think that this this is where it messed up. Um, I don't know if I should place this on Larson or Bowman. Um, they could have had a chance to get back and run side by side to the line, but what happened was Bowman tried to give a bump to Larson as Larson was trying to do those side drafts. So he's turning down, moving as Bowman's hitting him. That that's double negative. It's not gonna. Uh, it's not gonna help. It, it's gonna go, you're lucky you know Larson overcrack just paced the wall there, but anyway so here we go. Uh, this is this in my opinion is a Jimmy Johnson move of old. I know this is uh, you know be like he almost didn't make the 500. You know he did it on JJ Yaley. You know this is what are you talking about the Jimmy Johnson move of old? You know late in the race you gotta make the move and waits to the last corner and by God alive he sees this opportunity. With this little situation happen here, the checkup, J.J. Ely, uh, you know, it's tough. He could have stayed in line. He could have stayed in line and said, Jimmy, you're going to have to pass me on the outside. I think either way here, Yaley loses because even if he stays low, look, who's, look what Jimmy's got behind him. Jimmy checks right up here. He had Truex. Jimmy, if Jimmy pulls high, they're going to just bail out. You know, Truex going to go high on him, high with Jimmy, and just push him by. So, you know, genuinely, I think, like, it actually, I think, was a pretty smart move by Yaley. He, he tried to use the one car as a pick on Jimmy to kill the run. But he, damned if you do, damned if you don't there, you know, with um, with how the energy of the car behind, you know. I mean, Yaley's fighting an empire pretty much by himself, and... You know, damn, damn, he gave it his all. You know, he did everything he could, but Jimmy clears and he gets it and Reddick wins the race. Pretty, pretty solid race, pretty solid race. Um, You know, de definitely like the fact that they really talked a lot about the, uh, the transfer. That was, that was great. I, I really enjoyed that. Another thing, um, another thing I want to talk about, uh, this is pause, it's kind of blurry, but it's interesting. If any of you remember, a lot of the Chevrolets, the end of last year, especially at Daytona, they ran these red spoilers, and a lot of people didn't didn't know, didn't think that maybe was the OE or you know the light scanning or the inspection, whatever you want to call it. I can't remember. I don't know what the OEM. I don't think that's what it is, but sorry, I, you know what I'm talking about. This inspection, trying to get through something with inspection. Uh, but it's interesting is that Larson's or not Larson's Byron's car doesn't have it anymore, yet Almondinger and Kyle Busch's still has the red spoiler. Interesting. Very interesting. Also, to couple that with the fact that Byron's car changed, a lot of people thought that, at least I thought, the first iteration of his all-white car was very much an abuse of the uh, the light scanning system, the, the inspection system, because there's a lot of black parts on there, and they've just made it all white now. Uh, interesting. I just find it very interesting. Uh, something I want to I want to show here uh, because you know we, I talked about a little bit before earlier about how Turn Four is always notorious here. Watch Nima check back here. This is he's in this Dollar Tree forty two green and white car. Watch, watch him push here. Just whoop, yep. It's not a lot, but that's a moment. That's a moment. That's a lift. 
See him back off right off of Hamlin there, get caught by that 36 car there. Big moment. Is under commercial, so uh, it's kind of a lot, lot smaller of a shot here. But watch Kyle Busch here behind William Byron off a of turn four. It's another instance of this watch. Whoop. Ooh, he got a little loose there, too, because he had a little too much wheel on it and lifted. So, uh, yeah. It's interesting. You always see that here at Daytona. You always see the challenge of the cars coming off four like that. Now, a lot of people talked about how Denny Hamlin went from 16th to second or whatever on these pit stops. And, yes, he did. He moved up a lot. But my particular one person I want to talk about here, because Hamlin did it primarily on staying in the draft of the Fords and being the only Toyota not to come up there. So he actually, he kind of just latched on. Like, it wasn't through pit stops. It was more through, you know, strategy. Watch William Byron here. See how far back he is coming in. So you see everyone moving up here. He is roughly, you know, well, actually, we'll count how many cars pit with him here. And there's all of them. See, he's fourth in line of the cars that pit. See, you know, fourth right there. He's actually tied with fifth because the way Kyle Busch is. Watch him outbreak literally everyone. Watch this. I don't know if it's because he's got some sort of advantage or whatever, but I mean, he comes all the way up there. He pretty much is second by the time he's just already stopped on the pit lane, which incredible entrance job. Don't know if it's something with the brake compound they're running this race or if it's just the fact that he's just that much better with it. I don't know. But then on top of that, the Hendrick pit crew that he has does what a Hendrick pit crew does, and he wins the race off pit lane. Handily, to be that matter of fact. I mean, look how far he was ahead. He actually lifts so he can get a run, and he controls the line now. Uh, I I mean, that personally is a very impressive pit, pit lane. Here's a moment that no one really talked about, and I haven't seen it since it happened, but I wrote down that it was kind of a highlight. I think we're coming up on our right. Watch Kaz Grawl. Oh! <laughs> I mean, he, oh my god. He uh he about it wasn't it wasn't that close, but man, that, that did give me a moment. Like he's below the white the yellow line, you know, kind of like, alright, maybe he's gonna come up after the cars go by. Nope, he's coming up now. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mm, mm, mm. That's a, that's a moment that I would have my heart in my stomach if I was a if I was a driver coming up on something like that. Anyway, now of course we're gonna get to the wreck. Um, very hard impact by Ryan Blaney. Uh, I originally blamed this on Blaney. I actually backed this up a little more because it, it, there's a lot to this. Uh, I blame this on Blaney mainly because uh, it will, I'll explain here. But in the end, I think this this falls on Brad Keselowski. Uh, I think he he pushed the situation to happening. So I I know Byron's going to make a block here, right? But it's not an aggressive block. And I don't think it's one that's going to cause an accident. And I don't think Blaney does anything aggressive here either. The reason why I think Blaney caused it at first was because Blaney moves up, Byron blocks it. It's fine. But Blaney does this thing where he gets a little bit in limbo. He goes, Oh, do I push him? Now do I cut back down low? Do I go my four brother in down there? Uh, you know, eventually he pulls down. You know, Sindrick also, like, there was a signal, I think, of they were going to go together or something, right? But now, see, he gets caught in this situation. Ah, oh, do I, no, do I go back up? Oh, mm, oh, it's too late now, right? And I think his indecision, I thought he inadvertently side-drafted Byron, which slowed him down a lot and caused him to check up even more. Because, watch, he technically side-drafts him right there and just, I thought that hampered him and that's what killed the field. But in reality, and we go back about 10 seconds here, watch this. So this is all happening. I guess he can't see it. You know, I mean, Brad just hooks up here. I mean, look how much separation he, he has compared to every other car behind him in line. I mean, he's got about double of what Bubba has to the back of Almendinger. You know, Gregson has back to the 23, so on and so forth. And, you know, even down here, it's a little bit more disorganized. But I mean, like, it's obvious Brad is hooked up and going. He's the closest car to anyone in the field. Me personally, even in the situation of, hey, um, you know, he doesn't know what he's seeing up here. Don't really know why he's why he's pushing going to the trioval. That's 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 asking for a recipe for disaster. Uh, pushes him, and he's you know, Brad, by far a veteran of the sport. This is a move that you don't make as a veteran, personally. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't know why, like he's pushing him in the tri-oval, that that's my thing. And he, you know, he pushes him right 
pushes Kyle Busch right through Joe, uh, William Byron and just causes a enormous crash. It didn't need to happen, really. Um, shame. If we go back here, we can actually see what happened in the uh, in this part of the field here with Bubba and all those guys. Uh, just just check up. Everyone's checking up for it. Gregson just doesn't check up. Neither does the twenty one. Gregson, I think, just eventually just bulldozes through the wreck. You know, even just slams in the Byron a little bit there for good measure. And then in his uh, haste to try and continue to get through the wreck, he comes right down and doink right into the 78 and goes around. Talking about a veteran driver making a very, very dumb move. Um, I do not understand what Denny Hamlin was doing here. Take a look here. I mean, this is just a terrible block. An awful block. I don't, I mean, good heavens. That, that is terrible. And, and listen, I know there's going to be people that are going to argue, hey, he made it work. Hey, he kept the lead because of it. And, you know, hey, he's a, he's, he's a great plate drive, plate drive for a reason. Denny Hamlin didn't make this move work. The people that made this move work, in my honest opinion, is Michael McDowell, Austin Sindrick, Brad Kozlowski, and Kaz Grawl, and Allmendinger. This entire top lane being able, you know, Give McDowell credit for actually backing out and pulling out of line to try and lessen the checkup as possible. Being the bigger man there, you know, I think it helps that also that he, you know, you know, knows he's on the front row. But I mean, he really saved that situation from being a massive wreck, in my opinion. So I give him credit. So this whole situation here with two and a half laps to go, as when they all go three wide, driver I want to look at again is um is, is really the 24. I don't think the 14 benefits from this as much as I remember. But watch the watch Byron here. Byron is... What was he? Be? He'd be 13th coming into this situation. And they get three wide. And pretty much just, just rides by. Nothing impressive, but pretty much just goes, Oh, okay, I'll just stay down low and just pass everybody. In a span of a half a lap, he goes from 14th to sixth he gained eight spots because he passed all of these guys now is it, it it's impressive in that regard but also i think some of this had to do with the fact that the fords were trying to set something up in the back as you notice they all kind of backed off look at all the cars that backed off ford 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 you know all of them are fords so I, I think something, they were planning something. You know, they let all the Toyota, the, the Chevrolets and Toyotas get ahead. I think their whole plan was they were just going to outmite them uh, because there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, six enemy cars, pretty much, generally speaking. And there is what? Ten of them? So if they just backed off a ways, just go, you know, gobbled them up, that, that would have worked. We'll watch the rest of the finish here. As you see here, they kind of organize back here. They're like, all right, we're going to get in a single file line on the top group. Let them all stay low. We're going to draft this one back, and then we're going to go. You know, we got really, really, we got five back there, or four because of the, because we got McLeod and, uh, or no, it was five. Um, McLeod and Bubba back here. But you see, they, they, they're showing the battle for, for the transfer, by the way, which we'll talk about here in a second. But as we come around here, and we're coming through three and four, you see they have them all lined up, and they pretty much have set it up now. They've, they've set up their game plan, which is they're just going to try and outmite everybody, which they start with pretty easily. They, they move up here. They all are in the top groove. You know, there's nothing Byron could do about it. There's nothing Zane Smith can do about it. The first person who can really do anything is John Nemechek. He, he thinks better of it. Chris Bell does a move here to block it. Really... In my opinion, I don't know what really happened here. Part of me thinks so. Part of me thinks that what occurred here was, um, I think Harrison had the momentum, and watch how quickly he backs right back up to the two here. He lifted. He lifted before the twenty even got up there, anticipating it, which is what you can't do you have to anticipate to the you have to anticipate the move with just keeping the momentum 
So they pushed the 20 out here. Now, this is something I don't understand what Sindrick did. What is this move? Oh, my God. I mean, it's, it's a definitely, you know, the fact he held on to it, impressive. Daredevil move. Good job. It's one of those things, though, where it's like, it's not going to win you the race, though. Like, you can't, you know, the only way he's going to win this race is he's got to push Harrison to get side by side or something like that. You know, he hasn't set himself up to be in that position. And, you know, like, I know, yeah, now he might, but God, I mean, like, he's asking for a lot here and he's got really no momentum because of how much he made that move and it's over. You know, Chris Bell wins. So, yeah, I, I, I think there's going to be some apprehension there between the 2 and the 21. I don't understand that. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame that BJ McLeod didn't make this race, by the way. I mean, incredibly fast for what he had. It was a really cool run to see him, BJ McLeod, do that. Uh, for all stage two or dual two, but sadly he, uh, he did not make it, and the Casgrove made it in for him, and we get three uh, front or front row cars in. So yeah, here's your top ten from dual number two, and uh, yeah, Toyota proves that they uh, they're not slow. They just win both duels. So yeah. Anyway, uh, hopefully gonna get this out as fast as possible. Uh, I don't hope I don't know. What you guys think of this? I I, I just I wanted to see if, how well I could analyze it and try and get my own perspective on it. Probably not that super entertaining. Sorry if that's the case. It's maybe a little haphazardly done. I'm trying to do this without editing a whole lot and being a lot more uh, strategic with my talking. And uh, I also want to try to do these weekly. These aren't going to influence the uh, the other videos I do. They're going to be just on the side. These are very quickly done. Uh, this weekend, by the way, this weekend, uh, I'll put something out tomorrow. The next video is coming out. My, the big one, the, the, one of the big ones is coming out. So, uh, yeah, in order, for the sub 500. So, other than that, though, hope people enjoyed. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see people in the future. Take care. Has officially, oh, he's looking for a child to give that winning flag to. He's pointing him out right now.